See, it's amazing when you hit it's the record. A, like, that's all you have to do. It's a big button that says record. And it's now. red. It's red. That means we're recording, I think. I think. I, I see a clock on the, the well, heads up display. Well, according to Jeff, this is how we do this. Okay, this is how we do it. This like, is how... Really? <laughs> this is exactly how we do it. It's amazing how every time I go to record, I get a call. There, nobody can call me. But what if there is another crisis? There probably will be. Okay. And I'll deal with it when I do. I like how you acted like we were going to pick up where the show was off and then you start messing with your microphone. Because <laughs> that's what I do. Yeah. I mean, it's it's new gear. We gotta, it we're, is. We're going to get it's, the hang of it. Get the hang of it. Figure yeah. out how it sounds for us. Yeah. And all that stuff. But isn't this cool? <laughs> it is really cool. There's 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 foam on the walls to to cut back on reverberation. There's not a washing machine going <laughs> no on. No washing machine, no uh Wa- random water heater. Water heater <laughs> kicking off in the middle of the recording. Though the crickets might make a comeback. We'll have to see. There that, that was uh that, that was, was a very cool. popular <laughs> <laughs> That was a very popular crickets. segment uh on that last episode. It's funny. Yeah. I didn't mean for the crickets to be down there. They just were. Yeah. What was funny is that I heard them the whole time, and I was just oh, like, "Oh, did you?" Yeah. I'm like, Rick must have gone outside. I think it's one of those I don't think about it. Yeah. Because I hear them when I'm down there, so it's just yeah <laughs> background noise. I don't know. But yeah. So I think I think this is Dead Zone the podcast. It is. And I'm Brian. And I'm Rick. And yes, you're listening to Dead Zone the podcast. Welcome to the Dead Zone Podcast. Dead Zone is the sci-fi table top. Because we still don't know how to do a normal open. No. That, <laughs> why Why would we learn at this point? No, there's no reason to. Because we are starting season four. Season four. For our our for run on the show. Rick and Brian's Dead's on the podcast. Yeah. Has it really been four? Yeah. Yeah, this is... Holy crap. This is episode 137 of the main feed. Wow. Yeah. That's so cool. <laughs> <laughs> it only took us four years to use, like, have an actual setup. Yeah. And it's... And in know, a studio. In a studio. Because us looking around in the studio yeah. really shows yeah. them that Man, we're looking around the this studio. this place, you guys would be so impressed to see us here. <laughs> I, oh, my God. Thunderford Studios is actually really actually, cool. Actually, yeah. It is really cool. It's it's so cool that, that we have this space uh, yes. to work with now. Uh, the folks that run it are are pretty fantastic. Yep. And um, you know, letting us uh, use the use the the equipment here, which so, is leagues leagues <laughs> ahead of what we were using. <laughs> big big light speed jump ahead here yes. for us. And of course, the equipment obviously that we're using is from Jeff yep. from the Michigan GD and the Michigan GD podcast. Yes. <laughs> this is all his same in-house Jeff. stuff. <laughs> it's the same Jeff. Um, but yeah, so with the GT podcast, we decided to let's start doing it at Thunderforge because Thunderforge is actually like halfway between his house. Yeah, yeah, it and would my be, house. wouldn't like, it? It's perfect for both of us to travel to it. And now um, that the construction on the road outside is almost done, is it almost done? Because I didn't come up that road. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I did get sent around it, but I, um, yeah, hopefully it'll be done soon. Yeah, I'm it's sick it's of driving Michigan. The other way. Yeah. <laughs> It's roads in Michigan. Roads in Michigan. Anyways, yeah, we're not here to talk about the roads in Michigan. That no, suck. No, we are not here to talk about roads in Michigan. We are talking about how we we're on the road to get here. <laughs> but this this is the path we've traveled. So, we are now in yeah. a in a really professional looking place. A studio with 
with microphones that have pop filters and are on <laughs> crane arms that aren't just, you know, we I had my Yeti mic for... Yeah, and the Yeti mic worked really great It worked us. really well. It did. And, uh, and, but, you know, this is definitely a step up. Yeah. Hopefully it means I don't have to do as much uh, audio balancing <laughs> <laughs> between the two well, of us. Well, considering all the auto balance is right there. Yeah, I've got it at my fingertips now. I can do it live. That's so weird. I can do it live. <laughs> He's not touching it. I He's shouldn't. Doing I it. shouldn't touch it. I don't want to break totally it. I totally think you should do it. I, I. I hope we're still recording. Push the button. <laughs> <laughs> oh wait. So, on all the bright colored buttons over there. Yeah. On the left side. Push the second one. You the white one. <laughs> hey. We're in a studio. <laughs> <laughs> and silence. <laughs> and normal. Yeah. Um. Brought to you so, in front of a live studio audience <laughs> of <laughs> no one. Uh, <laughs> it, so it's been a really interesting road trip. It certainly has. So, yeah, four years. Four years. Um, Rob and Jack, of course, handed it off to us. Yep. Kind of like they threw it at, like, <laughs> hey, you guys going to take over? Um, uh, uh, was, there, says so. was there a question in it? Like, at least when it got to me, it was, so you guys are taking over the <laughs> podcast, right? And I'm like, well, I guess I am I, now. I don't, yeah, I think they pretty much presented it yeah. the same way to me. You can go back and listen to that episode because that was recorded at Evo. Yes, it was. For one of our Mantic events there. Yeah, Michigan Mantic Day. Yeah, uh, that Pat and Bob yep. and Jack and mm-hmm. Jeff was there. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, there was quite a few people that come f- down for it. Yeah. And we had a lot of fun, mm-hmm. and it was, okay, you guys are dead on the podcast now. And it's like, what do we do? And I was, All right, let's yeah, have fun. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, and yeah, a lot has uh, changed since then. Yeah. Um, and, and it's crazy because we went from not knowing what we're doing. Yes. To not knowing what we're doing, but in a studio with recording equipment, with merchandise. I mean, you're wearing yeah. a Dead Zone the Podcast shirt. That you I am wearing that, uh, that Dead Zone the Podcast t-shirt, you which, are. which you can get on Zazzle. Zazzle. Um, yeah, like, it doesn't feel like four years for me. It really doesn't. Like, it, it is weird to, like, look at back at how many episodes we've recorded. Yeah. Which is more than the 36 from yep. that solid number. Including the solo Brian. Yep, including <laughs> solo Brian. Uh, <laughs> but we've had some great interviews in that. Oh, yeah. Um, and we've covered, like, obviously we just, our last episode, mm-hmm. short. It really wasn't five. that much shorter than our regular really? episode. <laughs> when, it, when it all got kind of smashed together. Hey, that works. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we recovered, we covered the Michigan GT, mm-hmm. um, and now we're ready for season four and moving forward. Yeah. And you know what? It is kind of fun. Like it just, it just so happens that our like season finales are immediately <laughs> <laughs> like happen at the Michigan GT. At the Michigan GT. Um, cause that was, that was the kicker of the Michigan yeah. Mantic day was we yep. found out that, Hey, like. The week There's after GT is the GT. We should probably check it out. Yeah. And, and you know, that relationship has grown in a uh, huge way. Yeah. Um, and, and that event has has exploded. Yes, it has. Um, es- and especially had, for Mantic. We've had a great uh, show up of players for yes. the Mantic games. Um, Firefight was a blast. Yeah. <laughs> you got to play. <laughs> I didn't get to be a ringer at all, but that actually worked out all right because I could... Roman report. Yeah. Um, and that was that was a lot of it, like kind of a fun experience for both of us too. Is mm-hmm. the, so usually you have these side games that, like Adepticon, you're always running all these side games. Right. Right. Yeah. And running Dreadball almost exclusively. Mm-hmm. And and I'm always running Dead Zone. Yeah. We kind of flipped the switch. I mean, unfortunately, we didn't have Dreadball at the GT. Yeah. But you ran the games, and then Michael Carter ran Armada. Armada, yeah. And, of course, Carter and Blake ran Kings of War. Mm-hmm. But you ran specifically Dead Zone and Firefight. Yeah. Which was a blast, because I finally actually got to play a <laughs> tournament. Yeah. Um, but then also, like, with Dead Zone, mm-hmm. like, you running the Dead Zone, I got to talk to those, that couple. Yeah. Um, and do that off camera 
stuff. Yeah. Uh, and it was a really cool experience to mm-hmm. be able to keep coming back to Dead Zone. Yeah. Uh, versus sitting there running the tournament because I, I don't like to leave. Yeah, when you're running a tournament. Yeah, you don't want to you do don't, that. You don't want to be that guy that's like, oh, "All right, I'm I'm in charge. If you guys need any questions, I'll be over there." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> talking to other people. But it was great, and of course, we had new players in that. Mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. So there was a lot of questions. <laughs> yeah, but uh, but no, it was it was still went really smoothly. Like there yeah. were, there weren't any like contentious questions where it's like, "Oh, that doesn't seem fair," and it's like, "Well, this yep. is you know, it was there was a lot of like, okay, that makes sense." Uh, and and that's and how we'll, <laughs> and that's how we'll rule it. Um, like I was I was a little nervous going into it with my my cyberpunk, my neon. Board oh yeah, because that wasn't it's squared not up exactly squared up yeah. for Dead Zone. So it so but it worked in in that episode of how to make a non Dead Zone scenery <laughs> work on a Dead Zone board that I never recorded. But I did it, it with works. this terrain. Uh, I use guys. I use painters tape, <laughs> hey. and and just lined up, uh, you know, the, the lines, and it worked. It, it was really fun. And everybody loved playing on it. Yeah, I think I think overall people really really enjoyed uh, all the events. Yeah, and I enjoyed running them. And, and there was a little bit of that burnout after after the sure. event where it's like. I've painted so much terrain <laughs> <laughs> leading up to this. I'm like, I don't want a hobby at all. <laughs> but uh, I didn't have that choice. Yeah, you had to get right back into it. Yeah, I did. Hey there, I'm Brian. And I'm Rick. This is Blaine. You are listening to Dead Zone, the podcast. Keep listening for more excellent material from these two amazing men. Blaine, out. Which is really exciting. I mean, so, caveat, this is not a Mantic game. Um, <laughs> Levi came to the GT and we walked mm-hmm. around and that was so that for me that was one of the highlights of the GT for me mm-hmm. honestly was Levi coming down and walking him around and showing him all the different games and all of that stuff and then um him seeing Marvel Crisis Protocol yep and he's like dad I want to check out that game <laughs> okay so I jumped into hobby mode cuz we picked up mm-hmm. Marvel Crisis Protocol just the core box in uh, the Asgardians expansion. Gotcha. So hobby wise, it, like it was two days after the GT, I was in it. Mm-hmm. Um, but focusing on that, it. But the best part about it is Levi and I are playing a game, and multiple times he's like, "Dead Zone does this better for this rule." Yeah, or, yeah. Don't we do it like this? I'm like, no, Levi, that's Dead Zone. <laughs> he's like, oh yeah, okay. We should play Dead Zone again. And I'm like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, all my most of my hobby has been set, working on that and the John Carter project. Yeah. So, <laughs> so before we get too far ahead, because uh, cause with, with the, the Michigan GT episode that we, oh, we yeah. put out, yeah. it was just the interviews. Of people. Oh. So we didn't actually do any kind of recap of, uh, yeah. of the event. So, so I'm we should assuming probably that do that. Because this is how the podcast work. Brian, like, and I'm looking at the wall like I'm talking to somebody. Yeah. I, <laughs> Brian takes notes. I'm over here. <laughs> Rick does not. <laughs> so uh, so to, to kind of put it back into perspective, obviously you've heard us talk about the schedule of, of the event so I don't have to say on Friday we had yeah but obviously on Friday <laughs> on Friday of the event we had firefight yeah um, as we alluded to earlier and that it was a fun time <laughs> um, but with that like we had we had six players uh, turn up for the event which was really cool um, you know it, leading up to it there was 
there was a little bit of anxiety and nail biting. It's like, gonna happen. is yeah. it gonna happen? And just because we haven't had a chance to really get this game out to yeah. to our our groups of people, a lot of our players. I know I, I even had a guy who was really interested in it, but it, with come. it being on a Friday, uh, he he couldn't make it to the event. But with six players, uh, gave everybody the opportunity to face pretty much one another. Yep. Uh, we did a three round event, and um, and with that we had we had quite the collection of uh, <laughs> models. Yeah. Uh, going into it, we only had two factions, two duplicates. Yeah, I think. and it was the Asterians. Yeah, the Asterians, yeah. but very different Asterian oh builds. Oh my gosh, were they different? Yeah, and and so with that. Um, we had, um, I mean, well, I guess I'll roll off the, the players. Yep. So we met two new people from at the Wisconsin. event from Wisconsin. Uh, we, we had Justin and Nick uh, from <laughs> that, that had, you know, hey, shout out to you guys because you might be listening. Because <laughs> you recognized our voices, which still blows our minds. Every single time I think about, like, that whole where we are as a podcast, and it's like, Wow. People recognize us. <laughs> People recognize us from this audio only. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Maybe we'll do more videos. We'll see. Yes. Um, but those guys came over from Wisconsin uh, to to play in these events. They, uh, you know, it was, it was great meeting you guys and um, you know hearing hearing about how you were originally going to go to Adepticon uh, in 2020, the one that uh, never was. <laughs> And uh, to to have our event be the one that you come to and play uh, in firefight and dead zone, uh, it was great having you. You brought a great, uh, you know, a very warm energy, uh, and I think I think our, our two groups uh, are likely going to meet again on the field of battle. Uh, yeah. But uh, but all that said, uh, to we also had uh, one of our other good friends, Michael. He brought his <laughs> Terminators. He brought uh, Terminator, uh, like of yeah, the James so, Cameron variety. Yes. <laughs> so obviously, like in the gaming world, you say Terminator, and everybody immediately goes 40k. Yeah. No. No. These were the better Terminators. <laughs> These were the ones that I'll be back. Yep. Yep. So he ran Enforcers with those guys, uh, which was pretty fun. And then, um, like I said. One of the other ones that uh, Rick kind of hinted at. So John Carter, for those that don't <laughs> know him, uh, super creative and friendly guy. Like he's 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 awesome. And uh, one thing that he likes to do is he likes to kind of kit bash uh, his minis into some sort of theme. Uh, in the past, he'd actually played in the original firefight at Adepticon, uh, and he brought uh, Guardians of the Galaxy themed GCPS force. Uh, which was, <laughs> which was still, awesome. still stunning to this day. And, um, well, for this event, for this firefight, he, he was playing Veerman. Yep. But he changed him up a little bit. Just a smidge. Just a smidge. So he replaced all their heads and their tails <laughs> so that they were squirrels. squirrels. <laughs> like, it was so cool. So he had his, like, squirrelkin army, I think. He and, I, and I love that... So his, yeah, it was Squirrel King. <laughs> I, and I love that it was his Firefight Army mm -hmm. and his Kings of War Army. Yeah, they, they kind of doubled up there. Yeah. It was super sweet. Mm -hmm. And he had a really cool board that he presented yep. it all on. Um, just just a really fun, ridiculous, yeah. but, like, a uh, great time. And then um, I think uh, the other guy uh, on the list is Nick Shelhanek. Hey, you I, got it right. I'm going to pronounce his name right from now on because I replayed that audio clip <laughs> a bunch of times until I got it right. Um, he actually took first place in the event with yep. his Asterians. Um, you know, John Carter took second. Rick, you took, you took third place. I did with Marauders. With Marauders. And you got best sportsman. Which is crazy. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and then we had Justin. Uh, he actually won best painted. Yep. Because uh, he had the the Asterians that he did were stunning. They were amazing. Yeah, and uh, more more power to him. Like they looked really sharp. They yep. were all nice and cohesive, and uh, you know it was just great a great time. Yeah. Um, with that, uh, 
the like one thing with it being kind of the first firefight tournament in the United in the States, US, yeah. as far as we know. <laughs> yeah. Feel free to correct us. I'm I'm open to that kind of correction, but Pretty until sure, then, I'm gonna I'm gonna yeah. keep the button. Yeah, it's your button. <laughs> that I I had printed especially for this event, um, <laughs> and uh, but uh, but like with that, so as far as balancing goes, because that's something people have kind yeah. of been wondering about with firefight. So we played at 800 points on four by uh, four by four tables. Yep, four by fours. Um, and so like for my own like analysis of, of how things went uh, and things that I would I would change to improve. Yeah. Uh, is definitely less terrain in the deployment zone. Uh yep. We started setting up those boards like it was dead zone, uh, I think. We sure did. And like it wasn't exactly like we set it up like dead zone, but we definitely did the whole um, squared squared <laughs> everything and kind of laid it out like it was a oversized dead zone board. Yeah, yeah. But by doing that, we put scenery in the deployment zone that really shouldn't have been in there. Yeah, yeah. And, and, uh, but to be fair, we did it on every single board. So we did it on every <laughs> single board. Like every single board was off balance in the same way, if yeah. that makes sense. Um, and we, and we, but we did have a fairly balanced amount of terrain. Yes. Um, across the board and we did try to keep them fairly symmetrical themselves. Yep. Uh, it's just in some cases it did benefit some players uh, more depending on what table side you had. <laughs> yeah. Um, so there, that's that's one piece of uh, info that I, I'm kind of storing away for future reference. Uh, the One of the scenarios, and I don't have it in front of me, uh, has, has the variable like objectives on the board. Yeah. Uh, which was based off a of roll off. And uh, I, th- I think in two cases, uh, like on a, a D8, you guys both rolled ones. Yeah. So there was like three objectives. That was one of my games, yeah. There was three objectives on the board uh, where you could have had up to six, I think. Yeah, in like so that's one of those ones that I think from a tournament perspective, mm-hmm. like if you're going to play that one in a tournament, you set, set it, the number. Yeah, you set the number. Yeah, and, and that that's kind of another nugget that I'm taking – to future yeah. tournaments is for those variable things. As much as I enjoy kind of variability, yep. for a tournament, uh, it should be balanced because that really, we saw that it did kind of skew oh, yeah. the types of uh, encounters you had uh, yep. where some people are, are fighting just over three things as opposed to other people that can like hang back and like I can still capture points yeah. and you had to play the field a bit more. Um, so just to make it, so the, the battle type I think is... A bit more universal. Um, that'll be a good thing going forward. And then, I think the other piece of feedback that I got kind of repeatedly was in regards to Asterian Shields regeneration. Yep. Um, and we thought about this uh, for a while afterwards. Um, <laughs> yeah, we did. <laughs> where, where uh, for those that aren't aren't familiar with with uh, the Asterians, they have they have energy shields. Uh, I think three is for their kind of base units, but like the Spectra has like a, an energy shield five. five. And this is, this is um, you know, something you have to do damage to before you can damage the mobs. Yeah. And you have to get through this, this shield. Where I do, where I do like the shield in mm. Firefight versus Dead Zone. Yeah. Because as you attack them, the shield goes down. It doesn't immediately recoup all that. Right. But the problem... <laughs> So, so Asterians, so they can take uh, shield generators, which mm-hmm. uh, on a dice roll can uh, bring back those, those a number of those shield points uh, as they get uh, diminished. Yeah. But for using command dice uh, and and your your dice pool there, for two points you can bring back a unit's entire shield pool uh, just for spending that, and you can be very you know, economical with your your, yep. your points then, because you know maybe the only other thing you're going to spend them on is extra activations. Sure, uh, you can you can just be very conservative and use them. You know when you activate and everything. And so what the what that kind of translates to in the game though is a unit basically you you put three wounds on a on a unit. Any other unit like they're losing attack strength. And and other uh, factors in their yeah. their units, uh, you know, model count is going down in a lot of cases. 
so you do three, and then that unit's turn comes back around, and they just spend this one thing, and they're back to full strength um, with no loss for all that damage that you put to them. Yep. So, like, the counter, uh, as of right now, is all I can think of is, like, focus fire. Like, you have to focus. It really focus. is. You have to focus fire. And, and not only, units. like, focus fire <clears throat> one unit. I mean, yeah. this is one of those where you're going to use a command dice mm -hmm. to get an extra activation. Yeah. Because you've... This unit is taking the shield out, so now yeah. you have to use another unit to potentially kill it. Yeah. Before your player has an activation and goes, "Oh, shield gen." Yeah, and 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 to be fair, like the Asterians, uh, the ciphers specifically, which are the ones that hit the shields. Yeah. They do come in in small unit pools, yeah. like uh, so. So there is that thing where you know some Asterian players will bump that number up, mm -hmm. and and. You know, it would make it a very difficult unit to. Yep. You're constantly kind of having to put three, three or more wounds just to take just out to one get, guy. Yeah. Um, and so we, what we kind of thought would be kind of an interesting twist. Um, and who knows if this if this feedback will uh, <laughs> will take. Uh, but a lot of the other uh, recovery type command abilities in firefight yeah. uh, that that are using your command dice to heal a unit in some capacity, a lot of them are dice-based um, or with with kind of like a minimum, but also kind of a maximum uh, role that you can get. So um, what we kind of threw out there was like, okay, if if you, you're spending two command points, and, and again, like your, your basic cipher comes with three shields. Uh, if you spend one command dice with the shield regeneration, you just get one point back. So spending two and only getting, you know, getting three is is kind of a thing. But uh, if you if you had it where you're spending that dice pool and uh, we think you if you add a little roll to that where you get like one or, or, or you get like a D4 uh, points back. Yeah. Or, or I think we even said like a D2 uh, dice back for like one a one command dice yep. spend gets you a one D2 uh, points back, and so that for you know you can get one to two. Uh, yeah, instead of everything. Or <laughs> or yeah, and it, it just it just adds a little bit more variability into it. It doesn't make it an auto maxed out when you're spending yeah. two command points, um, and especially if you think about like the Spectra Energy Shield Five, having it's that bounce rough. back all the way, um, it, it's it's a little rough, and I I think that would be. That would be a kind of a good balance, yeah. Uh, and and again, kind of keep it in line with all the other kind of health-based regeneration abilities out there. Yep. Um, but yeah, so so that was that was that kind was of fire firefight. <laughs> uh, it's it's really neat to start having those more games done. Yeah. Uh, and we're we're gonna be covering the game a lot more. Yes. Uh, on the on the show, uh, because hey, it is a heck of a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun, and actually, people are asking for it. Yeah. So I mean, who are we to? Not say okay, we'll jump in. Yeah, and because we kind of do that. I think future future events too. Uh, we are looking to bump up our our point count. So eight hundred was yeah, eight hundred kind of learning like that entry level. Yeah, okay, this is because it's the first tournament. We don't know how many people have had multiple games. And yeah, to be fair, out of the six guys <laughs> that played, I think I had the most games with like six. Yeah. Um. But yeah, so going forward, I mean, we're looking at the thousand point and fifteen hundred points. We're mm -hmm. According to the rules committee, like a thousand points to fifteen hundred points, that's the sweet spot. Yeah, and and a thousand points you can do with a starter box. Yep, you which is sure really can. cool. And that and that's a vanilla starter box, yep. <laughs> like with no weapon upgrades or anything <laughs> like that. We we did the math because we were just sitting there for a while. It's like, well, what do you get out of a starter box? Um, which okay. is really cool. I, I mean, that's yeah, definitely. The, the the quality of this product, I think, is, is speaking for itself. A lot of people are checking it out. It is a heck of a lot of fun. And uh, I think we're going to see a lot more of it. We're going to be doing a lot more of it. Yes, indeed. More content to come for Firefight. Yeah. So with that, I think it will we'll bump us ahead. So Armada uh, happened, yep. which was kind of neat is that we had a walk-on uh, player make our fourth player <laughs> so that, <laughs> that Mike, day. Mike Carter didn't have to uh, to sit in as yeah. as a rainer. Um, and and I mean over there as well it was kind of like one player had the combined 
experience yeah. of all the other players. So, it, but it was it was a great uh, event. They had a lot of fun playing it, and um, I, I think I think Armada is one that um, definitely has a scene. Uh, like yep. at, at Adepticon, we had it sold out. Oh yeah. Um, and and I I kind of foresee that again uh, this upcoming year. Yep. And so I think it's it was just kind of a matter of. We need to get it uh, a little bit more in our areas, and I think we'll see a community yeah. grow around that. Um, but you guys are here for Dead Zone. Yeah. So uh, jumping ahead to that, so that was Saturday night. It sure was. Um, and we originally were going to do uh, four four rounds. Yeah, it was set up for four rounds. Uh, but it did get a little late. It did, because we like to do things late. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Uh, and so... Uh, we did ultimately go three rounds at 175 points. Yep. Uh, this one we had, I think it was, was it 10 players? Yep. Yep. Two, four, six, eight, ten. Yeah. Yes, I, indeed. I can count them. Math is hard. Um, and, and again, the Wisconsin guys played in Dead Zone. Yep. The Wisconsin guys came and played. It was Justin and Nick were, were there as well. Um, and uh, and Justin bringing the, the Rebs. <laughs> Uh, or, or sorry, um, Nick brought the Rebs. Yeah. And uh, and then Justin brought his Asterians again. <laughs> they had a pretty good showing. There was there was two Asterian players, uh, two Reb players, two Enforcer players, two Plague players, uh, an Enforcer and a Veerman team. So, actually, a pretty decent spread. Yeah. Uh, I think we were just kind of missing some Marauders, some Nameless, some Maison, some GCPS. So, you know, out of, out of 10 people to have pretty much half the uh, the roster presented. That's pretty good. It's pretty good. And uh, and so we played uh, a bunch of these uh, missions, some some more uh, of a slugfest than others. Uh, yeah, especially when you get five Terra Tarts? Or was four, it? four Terratons. Well, no, for one, one side. Game, yeah, for one side. That the one I think game I was, had was it six? Yeah, because Carter Cor- had his four, and then Corey, Corey had, had two? his two plague. Yeah, I think he had two plague. Yeah, so six six Terratons all in one little four cube section. Yeah, we we had a couple of scenarios where the the, <laughs> the center four cubes uh, were everything. Were everything, and they were also like. Height two. Yep. Um, and so there were some pretty brutal fights that took place there. Um, so we mentioned John Carter had four Terratons. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. He had a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles themed list. Yep, he sure did. Um, complete with uh, April O'Neil was April there. April was there. I think Casey Jones was on it. Casey Jones and was there. Splinter. Splinter, yep. And uh, it's always a blast it's to so see. It's so cool. And, uh, and, and, and then Nick... Uh, Shalhanik, he brought a double spectra list. Yep. Uh, and so that slugfest, where it was the four terror Four turtles versus spectras. Was also really cool to watch. Yeah, it was. Um, and, uh, and we had uh, some other, other folks arrive. Uh, we had DeAndre, who got best sportsman. Yep. Uh, we had Troy, uh, who was, he was our Forge Father player. Uh, we had Scott. Uh, my neighbor Scott, he was uh, <laughs> playing the Enforcers. He actually won Best Painted. Yeah, those uh, were sweet. Our good buddy Dom was there with the other Enforcer list. Uh, John with the the TNMT Rebs. Woo, yes. go Rebs. Yeah, whatever. Uh, Justin with his Asterians, and uh, and his buddy Nick with the other Rebs. His list was actually called Woo Go Rebs. <laughs> I saw that. <laughs> and then in third place, uh, we had Etienne. Uh, so, fun fact about Etienne is that uh, he used to be a dungeon master for when I started playing D and D in Lansing <laughs> years ago. Like when I yep. was just getting out of my hermit phase <laughs> and like going out and playing games with people. Yeah, he was our dungeon master. He moved away after a while, and then we just just happened to reconnect over Dead Zone, <laughs> which it's, is cool. It's a great game. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so he was playing the Veerman list. Yep. And I think he was actually running predominantly from the, the two-player starter set. Yeah, I think so. Uh, with maybe one or two extra things. So, again, 
you can make a competitive list out of these starter sets. Uh, and then Nick uh, took second place with his Asterians. And then Corey, uh, Corey Boons took first place again. Uh, you know, one of the reigning yep. <laughs> Dead Zone. So the only downside of, <laughs> of this matchup is that uh, because we did three rounds instead of four, we didn't get to see Nick Shalhanek and Corey Booms face each other. Yeah, because they would have. They would have. They are so far have been like the top two dead zone players in the yes, state. Yes, they have. And um, and and they've got they've got the record to show it. <laughs> yeah, they do. They are tough players, um, but really fun. Like they're yeah. great guys. You've seen me, you love me, you know you want me. Here you're listening to Dead Zone the Podcast with Rick and Brian. Don't turn that dial or I'm coming for you. And so, um, so yeah, so that was that was Dead Zone. Uh, and I have a bunch of pictures put up on our Facebook page of, of the events. I'm I've got a couple of compilation ones. Sweet. Um, and so I think as far as like takeaways from that, uh, Dead Zone's still just such a great game. It is. <laughs> um, and I think I would caution against the the scenarios that have the like the the ter- terrain requirements yeah. in the center of the board, if only because it made all the boards very same samey. And that's one of the things I love about Dead Zone is yeah, all your boards could be completely different, and it's still a fair game. Yeah. Uh, but with yeah, with all of those missions, the boards all kind of look the same and and they like with the the center four being height two like they're they were very blocking yeah uh, and so um which works which works really you, well you, you do like like any other dead zone challenge i think is you do kind of have to you play uh and you have to adapt yep. um and is is the best way to counter something is like you just have to be able to adapt to changes um in in situations sometimes it's easier than others <laughs> yeah. um but um, but that that's one thing uh, I, I think in the future I'm going to try to get away from that. Um, if if only so we can have a greater variety of board layouts and different types of scenarios. Um, and then uh, I think the other one of the other takeaways I had was that uh, the the 3D printed goodie bag that was a hit was a hit. Uh, so that was really fun. <laughs> so what I what I wound up doing is you know because I three D printed all this terrain and stuff. Yep. I just uh, I I just kept printing uh, just little like scatter terrain and little like cars and stuff that I found on the internet and everything like that. Um, the the Dan Batch uh, yep. Dead Zone like item crate tokens. Uh, I printed off a bunch of those. Some dead zone the podcast activation tokens, <laughs> yep. and I threw it all into this plastic bag, um, where so we had kind of our our um, our actual prize support from Mantic and the and the Michigan GT. Uh, we you know gave out those rewards. We, we kind of what we like to do is we kind of go from the bottom. Uh, yep. And uh, so we we kind of start with the player that uh, didn't didn't place as well in the lists. But gives them an opportunity to pick something that might change their games going forward. Yeah. Well, I mean, so speaking to that, I mean, Mm. you think about it, those guys that play first and second. Yeah. And third, they pretty much have everything for the game. Yeah. Like in this situation specifically, Corey does have everything for the game. (laughs) Yeah. Um, I think Corey's collection rivals mine. Yeah. And then when it comes to Nick and Asterians. I think Nick has about 5,000 points of Asterion <laughs> in Firefight. Yeah. So he pretty much has everything. Mm-hmm. At least one. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. So by going from the wooden spoon, the last mm-hmm. place, whatever you guys want to call it. Yeah. Um, the sportsman. <laughs> <laughs> which generally is what that ends up going to. Yeah. Um, but it gives them that chance to look and, and get that bigger prize that they wouldn't get normally. Yeah, 
Yeah. And and yeah, like you're saying, people at the top, if they're if the if the prize support is like a new starter set for a faction that they might already have or have no interest in yeah. playing, like that that's kind of like, oh, okay. Whereas for, for someone that maybe is just starting and that's why they, they wound up at the bottom, uh, it's like that can be a game changer for them going forward. Yeah. Uh, it's like, man, Forge Fathers, this is where I wanna <laughs> this is where I wanna go next. <laughs> yep. Um, or something like that. And so uh, so we had kind of our, our prizes, uh, the bigger stuff kind of going that way. There was some still some dedicated like first, oh, second, yeah. third. Uh, the the Michigan GT had mugs yep. uh, for for those, and we had uh, I think a fifty dollar gift certificate, a fifty dollar gift certificate for first place, and then we had some dice, yeah, and a dice box, yeah, a really cool which dice box, was amazing, and I'm so glad it went to the sports yeah, because I got it because you got it for firefight, <laughs> um, it's so cool, yeah, and uh, and so those those are great like um, options for for those top players, yeah. Um, and so uh, the other thing is, like like I said, I just had this plastic bag full of 3D printed stuff. And it was like, okay, stick your hand in and grab something out of it. And like that's, you know, you get your prize from the table and your prize from the bag. Yep. And it was kind of a hit. Like people really liked it. They had a blast. Play. Like they were excited. They were excited to find out what they got out of the bag. Um, it. Thankfully, it didn't turn into an episode of Seven. Um, there, <laughs> what's in the box? What's in the box? Um, Ooh, I got stairs. <laughs> yeah, there were stairs. There were stairs. There was barricades. So a really cool story at the GT. Yeah. Um, so for the Age of Sigmar mm-hmm. um, game, the number one player, um, like he's a ranked top 10 world's player. Yeah. So travels to the UK and everything and plays these games. So when he got first place, he asked, was like, hey, who's the youngest player? And this kid that's 15 raised Mm -hmm. his hand. He brought him up and said, you pick what you want. I don't need any of this. It's so cool. Yeah. (laughs) Like, like that's, that's some, some life affirming and life changing kind of stuff that, that you love that's that's what makes these communities yes. great um and it's 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 awesome to hear uh, such like young players uh, yeah so apparently like and this is this that 15 year old's third michigan gt right yeah so 13 <laughs> yeah in the and the dedication at such a young age mm-hmm. because these tournaments i mean <laughs> they're competitive it's long yeah. and it's competitive and I don't care who you are at 13 when you're standing across the table from some of us are giants. Yeah. You're tall and loud. <laughs> <laughs> That's super intimidating. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. to pro- essentially professionally play that game and go from there. Like that's awesome. I give a kudos to all those guys playing like that. Oh yeah. So yeah. And then, um, I think the other, so we got to see community Pat. <laughs> yep, we sure did, of course. So Mantic had their double booth. Um, the double booth and their new signs are amazing. <laughs> the new signs are really cool. Uh, it, they they sold a whole bunch of product, which yep. was great to hear. Um, you know, both both from from the players uh, that were playing yeah. in the Mantic games and those that weren't. Correct. Um, which which you love to hear. Um, and so we're we're going to be getting even more stuff going on. And so like so. So the Michigan GT also marks kind of the anniversary that I met Scott, uh, my neighbor Scott. Oh yeah, um, yeah, because you guys were playing because we were playing Kings, Kings of War. War, and so he did that thing again, and and uh, he he connected with like Blake, yeah. and and a few other folks, and like they started up another like Michigan Kings of War player <laughs> Discord. Yep. Um, and we've been we've like those those little pockets of people have been exploding yes, from events have. like this. Um, well, and so Rob Fanu from Countercharge, yeah, yeah, he, lit, his family is in Lansing, right? <laughs> um, so come to find out, also one of the Kings of War players it literally is in my backyard. Yeah, like apparently lives in the house <laughs> right across the street from his, uh, Rob's mom's. Yeah. Neighbors, <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a small world, guys. It really is. 
put, put the put the word out there if you're looking for players. Uh, there's yeah, throw it out there. I mean, especially like right now, you notice that like Discord's starting to pop a lot. Mm-hmm. Multiple different channels are popping up of hey, we played this game. Yeah. Um, so it's not just Facebook. Stores in particular have really been doing that more. Uh, like RIW, uh, which is a store near me, yep. uh, Upkeep Games and Howl. A lot of these stores are finding that if they set up a Discord channel, it helps keep their players organized. It helps yeah. It helps show what the store has to offer. Yeah. So it, it's, it's a bit better way of kind of looking for group type things. It sure is. Because, uh, you know... I've seen that uh, that that binder <laughs> over at Summit. Uh, I put my name in there once to yep. to play Shadowrun. Nothing ever happened Nothing. from that. Um, but but you know, Discord's kind of the new modern way that uh, people can uh, pop in pop in and see. Hey, there's there's people people playing games out there, and I want I want to play those games too. Yeah. Um. So I I mean even even just earlier this week. Uh, we had somebody pop into our Michigan Mantic community Facebook group saying, yeah. <laughs> "Hey, I'm just moving into Garden City. Uh, is there are there any people down here that play Kings of War Firefighter Dead Zone?" And I'm like, "Boy, are you in luck? <laughs> there of are, all the times. There are two of us literally up the street that you are living on. <laughs> so, um, and and yeah, it's 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 a fun time to be part of the community." Um, and, and continue to watch it grow. It sure is. Hey, I'm Chopper. I'm Brian. And I'm Rob. From Mobile Armor Radio. And you are listening to Dead Zone, the podcast with Rick and Brian in the morning. Never heard of it. <laughs> I don't even know who those guys are. So with that, so that's that's a lot of that's a lot of stuff that uh, happens <laughs> just because of the Michigan GT. Yeah. Uh, and so that's stuff that's happened in the past, Rick. What do we got going on in the future? Sort of. For me, I'll start. I'll start with okay. my project because your yeah. project is is really cool, and I'll, I want to give you more time to, to talk about. Well, it. I haven't really done anything with it yet. Still I mean, counts. I, I got the stuff. So, <laughs> so my my current project, um, like I said, I'm not uh, not much into a, a hobby mood just yet, um, but I I have finally gone and like, man, you know what? I'm finally gonna play Star Saga. I'm gonna go through it solo. I'm gonna find out what happens during the Arius contract, and uh, I'm gonna I'll kind of report on it to you guys. Uh, probably just do like brief snippets as I kind of make my way through the campaign. Um, I'm probably just gonna use like the recommended lists of stuff, uh, but obviously it's a campaign, so the the characters will grow as as we continue. And um, yeah, I, I maybe I'll I'll finally finish painting my Star Saga set. I've got all the the characters of the core set uh, painted up. But uh, a lot of the extra mercenaries and some of the other uh, terrain bits uh, have not painted as well as I <laughs> wanted them to. <laughs> Mostly because when I, I primed them, I, had, I did that bad thing and I didn't wash them at all. And so they've, uh, yeah. they've remained, after years of being primed, still stingy, rather stingy, stingy. tacky. So, um, <laughs> but that's, that's a project that I have... Okay. going forward. So, Rick, you've got a neat little project. And it's all because of John Carter. Yes. Uh, so, after playing Firefight with John Carter, and of course, so Saturday we were we had a few before Dead Zone started that we were talking and hanging out with Pat and everything. And, mm-hmm. and it was, I really want to do something different with Dead Zone this season, this mm-hmm. year uh, that I haven't done before. Um, and I was thinking about John Carter's list. <laughs> and the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, I, the squirrels. <laughs> <laughs> squirrels. But the Guardians of the Galaxies. Mm-hmm. And, and, of course, I'm not going to play Rebs. It's but you not could. My thing. No, actually, I can't. I don't have any left. Oh, that's right. Because they all got turned into Plague. 
of what I had, <laughs> which I love. <laughs> but they're still yeah. cool. Um, so I started looking around because the booth is there. So I mm. see all of the stuff, and I'm like, I want to mix Kings of War and Dead Zone. Mm. So I, I I took a couple. Uh, enforcers over to the Kings of War games that were going on and started putting them up next to armies and, and sizing things up. And I landed on salamanders. Yeah. So I am going to combine the salamanders and the enforcers. Okay. Um, we'll see how well it turns <laughs> out. That should be that should be a really really interesting combination. Uh, yeah. So it kind of that whole. Maison Labs screwed up on one of their serums that went to the enforcers, and all of a sudden you got lizard enforcers. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> so that should be fun. Yeah. So speaking of of other projects, uh, so in, in the last uh, core episode, I mentioned that I actually had finished writing my story. Yes, you did. Which shocked everybody that it, <laughs> that it got done uh, ahead of time. Um, but, uh, we did have the, the, the wrap up of quarter yes, three we did. of, uh, of the, the, uh, Mantic writing contest put on by, uh, uh, Golden the Gamer. Yep. And, and who took third? Who took third? Uh, it was even Cre- uh, Crespo. Okay. He had his story graceful, um, which grace was the, the theme, uh, for, for this quarter. Uh, and that actually... Uh, it was a continuation of one of his vampire stories. Yeah. Uh, which, which if you if you've been following and reading them, like he has a like a, a really rich like haunting story <laughs> about these vampires, and it's 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 very bloody and yep. and everything like that. Uh, but it's it's really compelling, and and uh, I'm really curious where it's going to go. I, he's talked about continuing. Uh, to and tell that would to be him. really cool if he kept doing that. So who took second? So in second place was Martin Blake with the Soaring Gondor. Nice. Um, so his was uh, a sci-fi one. Yep. Uh, set in in a uh, uh, kind of a, a GCPS uh, type type space, kind of sh- uh, showing more of the the cutthroat nature of being. A corporate military yeah. person trying to move up that ladder, um, which was which was pretty pretty interesting to check out. And then, so I kind of really want to hit a button, but I can't remember what one of those drum rolls. Because there's a symbol right here. That's de- <laughs> yeah. So that works. Who took first? So in first was Brian Novak. Who? Me. <laughs> Congratulations, man. That story is so awesome. Thank you. Uh, I had a lot of fun writing it, and um, I, I like was even like buzzing with more yes. ideas for more characters into this this universe. And so, uh, I I've, I've got to write more of it down. <laughs> you do, and because I want more. <laughs> you want more. <laughs> I want more. So so like for for instance. I wear a lot of my influences on my sleeve when, yes, I, you do. when I do some of these. And so one of the new characters I want to write is uh, from uh, Tenchi Muyo, which is an anime from the 90s. Uh, I have a complete blank look on my face because I have no idea what he's talking about. Yeah, so those that know Tenchi Muyo <laughs> no. would, would be puzzled by this statement Yeah, because it is it is not a very like hard sci-fi kind of show okay. or anything like that. But there are some space pirates in it. Oh, I like space pirates. And one thing I love about that universe that they set up there is kind of the space space part, like the yeah. spaceships and, and how uh, uh, they, those are crafted and like the interiors of them. So they're not, they're not like, uh, you know, the spaceships we have come familiar with, like from yeah. aliens where it's like, okay, it's, it's solid gray panels and yep. gratings and stuff. And it's all very narrow and, and tight. Like the spaceships in, in this world are like really open. They're, they're modeled after like Japanese bathhouses. Oh wow! Yeah, like so they're they're big. That was. I, I We're still moving learning around. this stuff. Uh, so they're they're big and open. There's literal like pools of water, um, and wow. and it's a lot of like magical kind of uh, holographic type interfaces okay. on things, um, 
And then one of, one of the characters has uh, what is essentially, they call it a, a cabot. It's a cat rabbit thing <laughs> that likes <laughs> carrots and hops around. Oh, can, I mean. Transforms into a giant spaceship. Okay. That is unlike anything you've probably ever seen as a spaceship. And so it's like playing with that idea of like, oh, like what if, you know, we had, um, oh, what, what the, and now I'm blanking on it, the, the rock people from Dreadball. Oh, like, yeah. Like what if they, you know, they're, they're just made of rocks. Their ship was made of rocks. What if, what if yeah. they just had a big sentient rock spaceship? That'd be kind of cool. Right? So like these at the are core, yeah, like the at, at the core it could be a fun living creature thing. That's crazy, right? Like these are the ideas that I I throw out into the ether and I will do something with. But um, and the the first thing is going to be coming up with a space pirate that has really crazy hair. So, but that doesn't match the theme. So of first no, part. which which I is. Think- <laughs> You need to attach more to your big mech battle. Because <laughs> I want to see a stunt bot rip apart a Spectra. That would, be, that would be Just an interesting saying. showdown. So Rick is also hinting at <laughs> that the new theme for, for us going into Q4 for the writing contest uh, was just recently announced uh, at the time of this recording yep. is that it's goblin theme. Goblins. So it has to be uh, goblin themed in some way, and uh, and that is so. Rob is not with Mantic anymore, but he's yeah. still a part of Mantic in, in spirit. <laughs> and, and I love that uh, you know uh, Golden posted about about yep. the events, and I think uh, I think it was Ian Davies is like, man, you're talking like he died. <laughs> and I'm just like imagining that voice. Stop telling everybody no. I'm dead. <laughs> <laughs> we can still hear. Uh-huh. Him now. So um, I've got I've got some ideas uh, already in in the hopper on that one. Right on. And and <coughs> I I just realized as I said it that's kind of a pun. And for those that have read my stories, <laughs> might recognize that name. Uh, yep. Uh, so maybe. Yeah. Well, we'll probably get to see some of those guys. The the uh, the big old space pirates. Space pirates. Captain Hopper. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so uh, a lot of stuff going on. It really is, <laughs> and that's not even thinking about the fact that we are at a studio. Yeah, where we're gonna actually figure out time frames. Yes, so we can actually get some battle reports done mm-hmm. and do some video content for our YouTube channel. Yeah, yeah. The, this place is set up uh, perfectly to do battle reports or yep. even just model showcases. You know, any Talk any about and all scenery. Yeah. Uh, so it, it's we're going to be doing a lot more stuff uh, yeah. at this place, and so it's just kind of a matter of figuring out uh, when and when. <laughs> yeah, when and when, because it just, used to be when and where. When now and where? It's now it's when because we got the where figured out. We got the where. Yeah. <laughs> um, and so, like one of the other things I know I have on on our dockets, uh, kind of going forward, is uh, I do want to kind of organize. A lot of our um, like the scenario stuff and yeah. like a lot of that that content that we've generated over over the times uh, that we've been doing the the show, and I wa- kind of want to put it all into one place so that it's kind of nice easier to find for a nice easy little access exactly, and that can be like a, a pin topic uh, yeah. that we can always kind of point people to because I I can't tell you like in just like the last month alone I think four people have come forward and it's like. What's a great three-player scenario uh, to, no to play with? And then it's like, well, we've we've come up with our own, but like and the think, AI, Ian, yeah, and the AI has gotten a lot too. Mm-hmm. So like all that kind of stuff, it, it, the AI in particular is constantly one that's yep. like, didn't Dead's on the podcast do that? And I'm like, man, I got to go find where that put that. Uh, so like putting putting yeah. all this stuff into kind of one shared drive where people can at any time go back and it's like, oh, okay, here's where we have all the scenarios that they put together. Here's here's all the lists that they did yeah. uh, to on, on their various episodes and stuff. So one of the things we're not so good at is like super structure, right? Yes. So we don't have sections. No. We just kind of go. We Yeah. I, 
it, it's but kinda, that's the way we like are. Kind of like how we, we skipped <laughs> over actually recapping the firefight thing right? until after we were like, man, uh, fire, you know, or uh, – Recapping the Michigan GT. Yeah. Until oh, after yeah. we were like, man, the Michigan GT was fun. Let's move on to something else. <laughs> so I want to jump back to Firefight real quick. Okay. See? Structure. <laughs> so when you're building your list. Yeah. And you take an extra leader. Or mm. you take your lead. Because you have to take a leader first. Yeah. But then you can take another leader and another leader, depending on how big your army is. Take his extras. So every leader has... Some kind of foot soldier that he can yeah. take a couple with. Take they're, them. They're plus ones. Take them. Because it gives that leader more of a unit mm-hmm. to make him more powerful. It's worth it. Yeah. I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> was that one of your takeaways from? So that was, really wasn't a takeaway for me from the GT. Because mm-hmm. I knew that I should be doing that. But I didn't. <laughs> because I just wanted Cobra Commander by himself. Yeah. Um, plus at 800 points, it's just a it's little tough. tight. But it's also super tight when you're playing a game and your leader is solo. Mm-hmm. Makes it really tough for him to get around and actually be beneficial to your army. Yeah. So, yeah, when you're making those lists, make sure you take the X plus ones. Mm-hmm. Anyways, that was, that's all I had. <laughs> <laughs> that's all I had. So, for more exciting firefight <laughs> content, we are going to uh, keep working on, on expanding uh, our, our discussions on that. Yeah. Um, you know, if, if there's an aspect of firefight you guys would like us to kind of hone in on let us know yeah let us know uh, reach out to us on facebook uh, on all the social media all the social medias we're on twitter we're on discord tiktok sometimes tiktok youtube i almost said yahoo yeah. <laughs> our email is not yahoo no no uh, our our email is um what is our email? What is our email? I have it somewhere. I don't have it listed here. It's connected to our emails. It's, it's our like personal emails. <laughs> deadzonepodcast at gmail.com. Ooh, that's a tough one. And um, pretty sure that's why. And of course, Podbean. You can actually send yes. a, a message on Podbean. Yes, we do read those. Uh, we don't respond to them very frequently, but we read yeah, them. Yeah, we do read them. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, but yeah, so like, yeah. Yeah. Season four. Woo! Episode one of season four. Episode one of season four. Yeah. I think that's a wrap. Probably. I don't know. See, that's that, that whole structure <laughs> thing. Like, if we had a structure, we'd actually know when to end our episodes. Eventually, we'll figure that no, out. No, we won't. It's been four years. <laughs> You're right. We've given up on that part. <laughs> we just kind of... Hey, we bring it up. We bring it up. We talk about it. So we talk about our issues. <laughs> we know what our issues we, are. We, we, we just don't fix them. <laughs> What are, you, what are you in for today? <laughs> well, I made the same mistake that I did the last four, four years. years. I don't know how to do an intro. <laughs> What's an outro? <laughs> I don't know. I hope they like the new music that I'm picking out. Oh, yeah. We got new yeah, music. New, new, new music. Yeah. yeah. He, he, he. I'm excited. Mm-hmm. The difference is you have to hit the button. I gotta hit the button. It's so far. Oh away. my god! Now that we're Do here, it. so far it's away. It's red.